To find out what's happening in other parts of Africa, we travel north to Kenya to meet Professor Wangari Matai. Winner of the Nobel Peace Prize and many other awards, Professor Matai is internationally recognized for her persistent struggle for democracy, human rights and environmental conservation. In 1977, she established the Green Belt Movement. The Green Belt Movement is a grassroots organization. Its main objective is to raise awareness amongst ordinary people, especially women, on how important it is for us to take care of our environment. Over the past 30 years, Professor Matai has assisted women in planting more than 40 million trees. At first, the tree planting was a means of providing basic needs, firewood, timber and food. But she soon realized the importance of protecting the natural forests too. The work we do is not only good for the environment, it's not only good for our livelihoods on an everyday basis, but it's also important in serving as a carbon sink. And that was when I also now intensified the campaign to protect the forest, not only for, for, for the services we get from forests, but also for this environmental global service of being carbon sink. I think that my awakening about the environment may have been due to the fact that as I was growing up with my mother, I was exposed to the land, I grew up on the land, and my mother, who actually belonged very much to the old generation, had a lot of respect for the planet, for the earth, and she understood the value of trees, and she understood the value of rivers and the, the need to protect rivers. Professor Matai has expanded the Green Belt movement into a number of other African countries, including Tanzania, Uganda, Malawi, Lesotho, Ethiopia, and Zimbabwe. But it's the jungles of the Congo that she is most concerned about. Contrary to appearances, these men are not soldiers. They are forest rangers from the ICCN, the Congolese Institute of Nature Conservation. Their job is to fight against the slaughter of wild animals and protect the biodiversity of the Virunga National Park. Professor Matai says that protection of the forests is not just an issue for the Congo, but one that every person on earth should be concerned about. Africa has one advantage. It has this huge forest, the Congo forest ecosystem. And this forest is both a blessing for Africa, but also for the world, because it's one of the major carbon sinks in the world. And I think that when uh, the world accepts that these are serving as carbon sinks, they are providing environmental services, not only to the regions where they are, but also to the world, then the world would be willing, I hope, we are urging the world to be willing to provide economic support, financial support to the countries in this region so that they can continue to conserve these forests for the planet, for the world. The ICCN rangers are also trained to take on the more social and rather delicate task of raising awareness amongst the local people. It's not easy to make the villagers who live in difficult circumstances around the park understand that they must stop cutting down trees and killing animals. Il y a une expression qui dit que on ne peut conserver que ce qu'on connaît, que ce qu'on aime. Donc il faut faire montrer à cette population qu'il a tout intérêt à conserver ce, 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 ce patrimoine pour les générations futures. Il n'y a pas longtemps qu'il y avait la, la forêt ici. Ils sont en, en train de se rendre compte qu'il y a une diminution de la pluviométrie. Donc on est en train de les faire comprendre qu'il faut quand même quelque part qu'ils puissent s'impliquer dans la conservation, non seulement pour l'intérêt. Euh, the amount of carbon stored in the world's forests is 40 times the amount emitted every year through burning of fossil fuels and the production of cement. With its immense areas of intact rainforests, the Democratic Republic of Congo alone holds 8% of that part of the Earth's carbon, the fourth highest national store of forest carbon in the world. Local authorities have realized that guided visits to the gorillas are actually the best way of protecting them and their surrounding habitat. 
In the areas where tourism has been introduced, poaching has almost ceased because the poachers avoid areas where there are people. The conservation of biological diversity is actually something essential to human survival, to our survival. In fact, we are all dependent on even these remote ecosystems. They have a direct effect on the regulation of the climate. They provide us with essential natural resources and they contain a vast storehouse of undiscovered treasures. I really do want to call the world to respect the planet, respect the resources that we have, respect life, respect each other. And the other word that comes with it is gratitude. Oh, have we got many things we can be grateful for. And finally, do not waste. We have so many resources in some parts of the world. And some of us can afford to get as many resources as we want. And therefore, we tend to overconsume. But we must realize that while we are overconsuming in one area, we are depleting resources in another, and perhaps we are causing misery in another part of the world.